everyone! In this video, I'll be talking about what I do in the first lesson with elementary school students. I'll be using a real class example that I gave just recently with an 8-year-old child who had already had a bit of English learning experience. I used this lesson for a one-on-one -on -one class, however, with some adjustments, this can fit a group as well. So, in my case, I didn't have a lot of information about the child prior to the class. I'd only known that she did some online exercises, but not much more than that. Which, it's quite a typical situation with students of this age. Usually, they already do know some things, either from preschool or from what their parents taught them. So, the objective may be quite difficult. You need to have exercises on quite a few topics at ready in case the child already does know the basics, but also you have to be ready to teach them from the very beginning. So, to start the class, I always have a small conversation with my student in English. It helps me see what they already know, as well as helps us both relax and get ready for the lesson. First, I warn them in their native language that I am about to speak English with them and make sure they know that they can ask questions at any point if they don't understand what I say. Before asking each question, I answer it myself. For example, my name is... What's your name? I'm 31. How old are you? And here I also display the number with a picture of a birthday cake. I like drawing. What do you like? Here as well I display a picture, but you can also just mimic the activity. If the student doesn't know how to answer any question, I first explain what they should say in their native language and then ask them to repeat after me. Next we play an icebreaker game. What I do is explain the rules in the student's native language and present them with three sentences about me. Some of them are true and some aren't. What the student should do is guess which ones are true, and then we swap roles. The sentences here should be basic, but include different constructions. Here's what my slide looked like. I don't restrict the students to certain constructions when we swap roles and encourage them to say what they can. In my case, even though the student asked me to translate the second and the third sentence, she then took the same constructions but changed them to fit her, which was great. Next, we took colors. In my case, because I had already known that my student had a bit of learning experience, I was ready that she'd already be familiar with at least some of the colors. And I guessed right. However, if you know that the topic is new to the student, you can start with just four or five colors instead, or adjust the number once you see the child's level. My student only needed a bit of a revision, so all we did was naming the colors and playing one game. But if yours needs more practice, here's what I was prepared to do. First, repeat the colors after the teacher. After repeating each color name several times, look for an object of this color in the room around you or in a picture. Watch videos and sing songs. In the PDF file attached to the presentation on Etsy, I linked a couple recommendations that I prefer personally, but you can find videos you like easily on your own. Another thing you can do is prepare a few objects of different colors, show them to the student and name them. The idea is to sometimes say the wrong names and have your students say yes or no. Or you can even ask them to clap, jump or send you emoji reactions if the name is wrong. For the next activity, you can pick a picture like the one I have here in my presentation and have the students point or circle the objects of the color you name. That's what I did with my student. Our lesson was via an online classroom, so she was able to circle the colors on the screen and had a lot of fun with it. The next topic I had prepared was numbers to 10, which my student also knew fairly well, so I didn't linger on it either. 
However, here's what you can do if your students need some practice with it. First of all, for the numbers, I prefer to start right away with songs and dances. So once again, here YouTube is your best friend. Next, you can count in turns. In my offline classes, I like to include some extra activity, like tossing a toy to each other once you say the number. If you are given an online lesson, you can clap in turns instead, or again send emoji reactions. Another fun activity is counting to a certain number and letting the student name the next number. You can even include a bit of math and give the student a few simple math problems to solve. In my presentation, I included count colors activity, where we practiced both topics counting objects of different colors. Next in my presentation, I included some moving tasks, which are really important to incorporate into classes when you see the children are getting tired of sitting. However, with my student, it didn't take us long to go over all the previous slides, and I could see that she didn't need it just yet, so I left it for later. Depending on your student's pace, you may want to switch to this activity sooner in your lesson. The idea here is simple. You give a task to the student and tell how many times they should perform it. For example, clap seven times. After all the tasks are complete, children usually have a lot of fun swapping the roles. So I ask them to give any three tasks for me to perform. Learning numbers is a great moment for introducing a how old are you question. My student had already known how to tell her age before the class, but she wasn't very confident with asking the question. So I explained what each word means literally in her native language, and we went over it a few times. Now, at this point of your lesson, depending on your pace and the student's knowledge level, it may be the time to draw conclusions. It wasn't the case for me, because I was only halfway through the class, so the next part of the slides really saved my lesson. But once again, each situation may be different. What I did next was introducing two new pronouns, which was the first thing that my student hadn't seen before, but she remembered the words really easily. First, I had her repeat each word, then she traced the letters, which I only asked her to do because she already could do a bit of reading as well. If your student can't read yet, you might want to skip this step. After tracing the words, she added the missing letters from her memory and finally wrote the words herself without looking at hints. I saw that I could go for a bit higher difficulty level with my student, so I introduced the three present forms of to be. I started by reminding her how we were asking about age and how we were using I am when talking about ourselves, but are you when asking about each other's age. Our native language doesn't have an analog for the present forms of to be in normal speech, so I explained what it means and provided literal translation for better understanding. Then I pointed at he and she and explained that they take on the is form and gave examples. I am, my name, you are, student's name, you are, eight, he is, eight, she is, eight. On the next slide, I included one of my worksheets and asked the student to connect the bubbles, which she had a lot of fun with. Next slide was about practicing is with the new pronouns, as well as different animals. I didn't introduce it at that point and asked the student to name the animals she knew instead. Finally, we used role play to practice the pronouns, to be forms and how old question. For this, I asked my student to bring some toys, as well as prepared my own. That way, it was not a teacher-student dialogue, but instead it turned into a fun game she got super excited about. 
Again, here's where your lesson may come to conclusion, but we still had enough time for some reading practice. My student was already familiar with most of the letters, so what I did here was naming a random letter and the color, and having her paint over the letter. We then went over each of the letters, and I explained the concept of a letter having a name in the alphabet and a sound it produces when reading, which is a useful thing to do in the first stages to prepare your student that the letters aren't always read similar to how they learn them in the alphabet. So here, for example, I explained that A is the alphabet name, but when reading, this letter will be pronounced as A. Finally, we finished the lesson with some reading practice. In the end, I asked the student which of the exercises were her favorite and which ones seemed difficult. She named all the exercises that involved drawing over screen or coloring as her favorite, as well as playing with toys. I am really happy with how this case turned out, because I didn't take a very conventional first lesson path here, but uh, that's exactly what saved my lesson, and my student left full of energy and with some new information learned. I hope these tips and examples helped you too. If you have any first lesson tips of your own, feel free to share them in the comments. I'll really appreciate it. Until next time!